This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, saving your day from boredom with the best podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up, everybody? Ricky Whitmer here, along with fellow man child, Johnny Carlin. And we are back for a movie review yes. here on Most Valuable Podcast. The last movie that we saw that you can check out is It. Johnny and I went to see It. Well, It well, too. was pretty good. I mean, It was a movie. <laughs> we could just keep saying It the whole time it. with that. And this week we went out to see another movie. And yes. this one we this one I had been excited for since we saw the first preview. We're, pre, we're reviewing um, American Assassin in this one. And this was one that when we saw that first preview, mm-hmm. I was excited for. I was like, yeah, Michael, you were. Michael Keaton's in it. Sign me up. Yep. Sign me that. up with the Michael Keatons. Like that. I was like, you know what? Michael Keaton's in it. I turned to you when we saw it. And I said, Johnny, we're going to see it. Yep. Ever since uh, Spider-Man, uh, Ricky's like, anything mm-hmm. with Michael? I, I can see it on his face. Anything with Michael Keaton, Ricky's going to go see now. Yeah, I know. I know. It's, it's just he's a great actor. And he <laughs> sells the parts that he's doing. But That's true. If you're new to our review, how we do things is... We're going to start in a non-spoiler fashion, then we will warn you, we'll go into spoiler mode if you want to pause and come back at that point after you've seen the movie, you can do so, or you can just bulldozer right through that warning and go into spoiler mode, and then at the end, we give our rating, which I believe this one is going to be, I made a joke to you that I'm not going to make, I'm sorry everyone listening and watching, I'm not going to make that joke on the air, on the hot mics, but... What should we, what are we gonna give five what? Uh, let's leave it till the end and we'll let them find and out. Johnny's that's basically Johnny saying, "Hey, let me think about it while we record yeah, this no, because gonna, I don't know what to we, do." We like we like to put it five something pertaining to like the five, movie, almost like a five star rating, your typical five star rating, and then we give also an MVP or what we call the show stealer at the end, which is MVP giving the MVP. But before we get into it, Johnny, what do I have to do? A little bit of house cleaning. If you have not already, check out patreon.com backslash most valuable podcast. Link down below in the description. You want a Patreon podcast audio, Patreon podcast um, video for $10 a month. You could join us for any podcast, Fast Break, Onside Kick, Primetime Podcast, Rick and Johnny, a movie review. You can be on that. The Patreon rewards are down below in the description, patreon.com backslash most valuable podcast. Another way for you guys to help and support the channel. But Johnny, let's get into it. Yep. We, we are done with the house cleaning. We're done with setting everything up. And I will ask you this just to start. Overall, if someone was like, hey, Johnny, should I see this movie? What would you tell them? Yeah, go see it. <laughs> that's it. Oh, you want, you no, want more? Li- you want me to elaborate? I would, li- that's I right. would like some oh, elaborate on a podcast, yeah, right? We're on a podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I thought it was a good movie. Great uh, action movie. I mean, like I like some of the view, um, not the mm-hmm. viewers, but the uh, critics were saying, yeah, it's got a lot of the generic action movie tropes, mm-hmm. but it's worth it. it. It's really good. It's got its own variant twist on them too, so it's not like it's dead the same. Because I mean, if you don't have all any of the same action movie tropes, mm-hmm. you don't have an action movie. Am I yeah, right? Kind of, yeah. You gotta um, have some of those in there to make go- it. An if, action if it's movie. not in there, it's not really an action movie at this mm-hmm. point because they've all parts of an action movie have been in every other action movie. Mm-hmm. But no, aside from that, I don't really follow critics, anyways. Honestly, mm-hmm. um, I thought it was really good uh, for this genre of movie. It was pretty good. Um, it's it's got a lot of the action. It's got a really compelling story. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing that I want to Kind of, and I'm going to leave, uh, you know what, scratch it. I'm going to leave it to, that's going to be the first thing we talk about in spoiler. Mode. Okay. I was, I was going to bring something up that like, it's my one, like, it's not a question like of if it makes it a good or bad movie. Okay. But it's a question that I had from like, after watching the beginning, I then shortly after was like, huh. And I asked a question, we're going to leave it to spoiler because I don't want to yeah. spoil anything, but yeah, I mean, this movie, the thing that I like, and this is a little insight into us, is what I like to do is, I think it's important as us kind of reviewing movies, Yeah, we can't go off of what other critics say. Exactly. It's our thought. But what I like to do after we see a movie, after I've come up with my thought and my kind of 
rating because you and I ask each other right after the movie. Yeah. All right. What would you give it? I like to at least look at the early reactions from like Rotten Tomato just to see where I lie. Which side was I on? Was I agreeing with most critics? Am I not agreeing with most critics? Mm -hmm. Where do I lie? And with this one, I like the movie. Like I didn't all the like, I mean, the the action thriller tropes. I didn't, they didn't like, it's not one of those things where they stick out like a sore thumb. No, they don't. You can point them out if you're looking for them, but really it's not something to where it's like, wow, that was just a corny, corny action movie. No, exactly. Movie. That's what I'm saying. Like it has its own mm-hmm. variant on it where the fact that like you don't notice it unless like you said, mm-hmm. you're actually looking for it. And I mean, again, you're not going to have an action. I, I mean, that, that's besides the point. That's why mm-hmm. I don't listen to. I don't even check the critics afterwards. Yeah. Because a, I don't want the like I don't want anything they say to maybe get mm-hmm. me thinking. Well, maybe, maybe yeah, that wasn't in, any good. Maybe influence you. Yeah, in influence me at all, which usually they don't because mm-hmm. it's like well, like I've seen a few of them before a movie that I'm, I was yeah. thinking about seeing. It's like well, this is a terrible movie. Like well, I'm going to go see it anyways. Yeah. Because and it's like I go, was excited in the first place, and you go against them. But I mean, the thing that I liked most about this movie. Was the acting in it? No, oh, yeah, and I felt like there was across the board. Let's be honest. What got me into the theater was Michael Keaton. The second thing that got <laughs> me into the theater was the story. Looked like a. It looked like a story where I'm like, okay, I can get behind that. Yeah, no, it guy felt, who, seemed like a really interesting story. Guy who loses the love of his life wants to go and kill terrorists, and basically a revenge story is what it yeah, is. Yeah, it became it was it was a revenge story. But I mean, it's also got that twist of, and you see this in the trailer of basically someone from the team that he's joining, where it's like, you know what, he's a he he's gone rogue. He's gone. Someone's gone rogue, and we got to yeah, stop oh, him. Man. Kind of a thing, but. No, I. the best thing I liked about it was the acting. I think that the acting was kind of led by our two main characters. They were. By oh, yeah. Michael Keaton, and then um, you, I'm pulling up I, I um, mean, The character that played Mitch Rapp, uh, yeah. Dylan O'Brien. Dylan O'Brien. So O'Brien and Keaton obviously led the charge. They were the two that had. Yeah. Because the thing that it is is they led the charge because most of the scenes after they met they had to have the chemistry and the kind of interaction between them is what needed to be there because they were interacting a lot after that scene where they are introduced to each other. Yeah. No, I agree. They they Once they're finally introduced, you get a lot of great chemistry between the two. Mm-hmm. The movie actually starts rolling even more. Yeah. And I'm not saying the beginning was slow or anything. Mm-hmm. The beginning was great. I mean, you it, it just like... A lot of movies you like to, uh, I, I getting getting something from you when, with a lot I like of our to change reviews. a lot. Ricky likes it to be a very driving. He just likes to get to the point in movies. It seems I do, like I do, I do. So uh, a lot of our reviews are like, "Well, it was slow in the beginning, mm-hmm. <laughs> et cetera, et cetera." Let, let's put it this th- one. No, like it just like hit. It's like right in the beginning, hit let, the point. Let's, let's put keep it going this way. When I went to see, and you gotta understand, Harry Potter. Yeah, I wasn't like I went and saw every one. But the, I think it was what, Deathly Hallows, where they split it up into two parts. Yeah, I think that's the my one. Cousin, yeah, my cousin Dave and my friend Sean dragged me to the movie, and they're like, oh, no, no, you'll like it. It's got some action in it. No action until the last five minutes. <laughs> and I literally was like, what the fuck did I just watch? What did I do? Like, you dragged me. That wasn't me part one or part two? Part one. Oh. And then you know what they said to me? Oh, well, all the action's going to be in part two. Well, guess what? I ain't going to see part two because you already... Here's the thing about me. You burn me once, you're not going to burn me twice. Like, Dave keeps trying... And this is Ricky rant mode. Ricky rant mode. Ricky rant mode. But Dave's trying to get me to buy Destiny. Uh-huh. He's like, you should buy Destiny 2. You should buy Destiny 2. I had such a bad experience with Destiny 1 that it's hard for me to go out and spend my money on Destiny 2. To where, did I like the game? Yeah. But it's also of uh, you didn't sell me the entire game right away. Yeah. You sold me a shell of itself, and then I had to buy the rest of the, the parts DLC yeah. of that game. No, I heard about that. So it's already burned me once. That's the example that I use. You burn me once, and I won't want to go and buy your second product. But this movie didn't do that. No. The thing I wanted to ask, because you brought up the beginning, I feel like I want to go into spoiler mode Anything that you think we need to touch in non-spoiler mode before we kick down the door and go into spoilers? No, it's kind of hard to, for us to talk about anything else without doing that. Well, and this is where you guys, if you haven't seen the movie, want to go see it, I would say go. If you're thinking about, eh, should I? 
if you're going to like an action, like typical action movies, you'll like this movie. Yeah, I will. I mean, it's also got, it's got some parts where I had to cover my eyes because... Uh, Ricky we'll, Screamish. We'll, we'll, we'll get into it. It's got great chemistry between um, Rupp and Hurley, the two uh, main Rip characters. Rip and Hurley. Rip and Hurley. Um, in the two main characters that we do. But if you want to kind of stop, this is where we're going to do it. But Johnny, let's jump into spoiler mode. And the thing I wanted to start with, let's start with the question that I had. Obviously, it has to do with the beginning that you mentioned. Yeah. This movie right away kind of hits Jumps you. Jumps right in. Hits you right in the chest. Kind of hits you with the feels. Kind yep. of like how Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 <laughs> hits you with the feels yeah. right away. Where it's... It's them on the beach in Spain. He asks her to marry him. Yep. She obviously says yes, because what girl wouldn't? And then as he's going to get drinks, terrorists come, shoot up everything. She dies. He, shoots her right in the... You, you see, she shoots her right in the chest. Yeah, and then here's the thing that is up for speculation a little bit. Yeah. He gets shot... In the in the side. First, he gets shot in the leg. Then yeah. he gets shot in the shoulder area. Then he gets see. then he gets shot in the side. When the t- other terrorist comes and looks at him and shoots one more bullet, I thought he shot him, and that's why I was like, "How the hell did he survive?" You were saying you took it as he kind of finished off the girlfriend, made sure she was dead. Where I was on the other side, I thought, but. Point being, he survived. Yeah. Which was a miraculous thing in itself. Here's the thing I wanted to ask you about this whole first scene. Okay. Is obviously we knew that this scene was coming. Yeah. Because we've seen some sort of... we, we saw Some the, form of it in the previews. We saw the skeleton of it. Yeah. In the previews. Do you think... That by having it in the pre... Do you think that... Here's the question that I was formulating in my head. Is, like, A, do you think they needed to have it in the previews? Would it have been a more impactful scene if we didn't have that in the previews? Or did they need it to set up the story? Because if they didn't, it's not going to set up a story in the previews and drive people to go see the movie. Um... I mean, it probably helped being in the previews because it gave you a little bit more of why he was doing it as opposed to, mm-hmm. oh, just another uh, action movie. Like, we, what, what yeah. did we say? Um, Where it was like, oh, this guy's just out for revenge. He yeah. wants to do it for justice. Yeah, no, he's in it for justice. Mm-hmm. No, uh, he has a pretty damn good reason to. A very personal reason. A very, yeah, a very personal reason for why mm-hmm. all these people have to die but in like, his mind. It's just part of me is like, man, I wonder what would it be like if. They kept it out of the preview because I feel like that scene right at the beginning would have hit harder if I didn't know it was coming. Yeah, no, I agree with that. It would have hit people harder if you didn't have it in the previews. But I think, like I said, I think it helps having in the previews to get more people to come see it. Yeah, like part of me feels like now that I'm thinking about it in retrospect. Yeah, part of me feels like if you just had mentioned that, oh, the girlfriend died, oh, the girlfriend's dead, but you don't show how. And then the first thing you see is how. I think even would have hit me in the gut, and it would have because like it did gut punch me to where I was like, no. But at the same time, I feel like it could have had a stronger effect, more so on that Guardians of the Galaxy level, if I didn't know it was coming all together. Yeah, no, I I agree. Even I think it'd be even stronger if you didn't know that she died at all. Like if they didn't even have that scene in there whatsoever. Uh Any of the scenes, like, with her Mm -hmm. in the previews, like, it would have been like, oh, okay. Like, you wouldn't have understood, like, at, like, for the first few seconds Mm -hmm. what's going on. Then you would have seen the main actor and said, oh, maybe this is, like, you wouldn't until, like, basically you'd be wondering what's going on. Mm Mm-hmm. And then so your head, it'll start like putting it together. Okay, this is maybe before the action stuff pretty yeah. quickly. It shouldn't take you that long. Mm-hmm. But then like it would have hit you really hard because like, oh shit, this is why he's doing what he's doing. Yeah. And I, that was just something that I had thought about since we saw it of like, did, would have it had a greater effect if we didn't know it was coming or did they feel like we have to put it in the previews because if we don't explain it, no one will come to the movie. Yes to both. No one will no like no one will want to come because it won't drive them to it. That's where I was kind of well as sitting I think, on with as it. I think either the re, the re, 
the reviews put it that you were looking up afterwards, mm-hmm. or even we may have done it. It would have kind of just been another Jason Bourne if we hadn't had that in the previews. Yes. And who, honestly, what person wants to, like, how many less people Who would, wants to see a Jason Bourne without Matt Damon? Well, I'm just saying, in general, too, like, it, it was like, oh, I've seen Jason Bourne. Do mm-hmm. I want to go waste my money to go see this in theaters, or do I want to just wait till it comes out on Redbox yeah. and rent it? And I mean... And that's why they threw that in there, because it gives you a little bit different idea, like... Why he's doing this? Obviously, it's not the same. I've mm-hmm. seen bits and pieces of Jason Bourne, and it's not the same. I mean, obviously, he's got all the same tropes because it's mm-hmm. the same general type of hitman assassin movie, but it's not the same. And the thing that after that, so then they jump to a year and a half later, eighteen yeah. months, and basically, it's just him trying to infiltrate the, which was impressive, trying to infiltrate. The terrorist stronghold, the cell, the, the cell, as they call it, in um, I think it was Iran that he went to. I think so. Um, but basically, we jump to that, and then we get to see more of what's going on. How he's a psycho when he's at the MMA gym, yeah, and he's just going crazy on the guy. And the guy's like, "Dude, get the fuck off me!" Kind of a thing, and he gets kicked out of the gym. The kind of what the fuck moment that I was like, "Whoa!" Was the shooting when, range. Well, he's at the shooting range. He's just shoot, shoot. And then he steps out into the range and starts, like, crossing over to other people's targets. Well, he was doing that before. He, he was doing other people's targets before he even uh, yeah. crossed out. Because there was that part at first where he, he shoots do- over and the guy looks at him like, dude, that's my target. Yeah, no, first he's, like, he's just doing it with the pistol. Mm-hmm. And then, you, then you, like, cut back. They show the guy. And they cut yeah. back to him. He's got, uh, I think it was, like, I yeah, don't know what assault kind of rifle. The assault rifle, thank you. And he's just, like, dick, 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 And then he crosses up, dick, 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 dick. And then he, mm-hmm. then he like, pull, puts it down, picks up the pistol, takes a few more shots, then steps out there, and you mm-hmm. hear the buzzer go off. Yeah. And then he gets he gets reprimanded for that from that place and too. The one, and the one guy's like, "Dude, what the fuck? You're gonna get yourself killed." Yeah, exactly. You get your, but he just walked out, bam, 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 and he's like crossing, shooting his own. And it was just one of those things where it's set up like, "Wow, he is crazy." Like he even had their pictures in his closet and just throwing knives. Yeah, even the landlords their landlords like, "No more roughhousing." Yeah, oh, no, sorry, I forgot. Sorry, I didn't know. It was, it was past ten it o'clock. Was past ten o'clock, but. The kind of beginning to me all set up because then we get right away, he's at the terrorist cell. And the thing that I don't understand is what he was expecting to do. Because, yes, he had his hands behind the chair and he was kind of using Cutting the rope, the little piece of metal he had yeah. to cut the tape or rope that was around him. But when he gets saved by basically the CIA, yeah, it was, I just sat there and thought, what was he going to do? What was he think he was going to do? Right. Like, what did he think he, like, it basically would have been, I'm going to try to kill the head guy because by the time I kill him, they will kill me. Yeah. They would I think have that's already what shot plan me. was. Or it was basically, you're like thinking a martyr mission or a suicide mission. I think it kind of was. Like, he was... He was like, well, if I make it out of here, then, yeah, I'm going to go from cell to cell, killing yeah. everyone. But I didn't think he would, like, I don't think he had an exit strategy, mm-hmm. necessarily. Which, he's not trained. No, he's he not. He wasn't trained. He wasn't so tra- he, he's self-trained. And plus, the the kind of overarching thing of this movie that I, re- I like, I really liked yeah. was the overall theme that I looked into it is dealing with emotions and letting, like, the whole thing of, like, Hurley says... Don't make it personal. Exactly. Don't let it get personal. And that was the whole thing that you saw early on. Not only was he making it personal because these were the terrorists that were directly linked to killing his then fiance because she said yes. Yeah. But also just the emotions that he was dealing with at the MMA gym, at the firing range, in his apartment just yep. all those emotions raging in his head. oh he had one thought and that was to prep to kill these guys because mm-hmm. he was he was even infiltrating to get into there because you had mm-hmm. you see he had his uh his computer open yep. and he actually had like a skin to go mm-hmm. over his laptop so, so he can, can type, type in them. arabic yeah so he knew what he was typing in arabic to talk yeah. to them and that was another thing where he had the um arabic contact texting him and kind of the whole thing that was interesting was the okay we're going to answer questions we're monitoring your keystrokes answer quickly yeah and they just kept asking him questions and he had to fi- rapid fire ask yeah questions. which means he's been studying up this shit well you have to no you yeah have you do to. 
But then fast for let's fast forward a little bit. So he gets saved by the CIA. The um, CIA head is like he's the best like I've ever seen. Where he's testing through the roof, testing through the roof, and the whole thing. You knew it was going to happen. Like this is another one of those trope warnings. Yeah, off where it's like the head general or the the army sergeant that it's like, no, nah, I don't want this guy. He's a bad apple. And he just spits into the bucket. But, yep. like, he's a bad apple, or it's one of those things. He's a loose cannon. How many times can't deal with have a you loose, heard that? Can't have another one of those. Can't have another loose cannon. But early on, like, I love the relationship between yeah. um, Hurley and um, Mitch right away. Yeah, well, what sets it up nicely is he doesn't want him there. Mm-hmm. Mitch doesn't necessarily give a shit about anything. Oh, he doesn't give a he, shit about anything. Except what he wants to That's wants it. to do. And like it's like tunnel, one person. Focused like a laser. Exactly. He's got, it's one person mm-hmm. forcing those two together. Mm-hmm. And one of my favorite scenes is, like, just some of the interactions. Like, when Hurley's like, we'll see, like... Be ready at five o'clock, and Mitch just looks at him and go, "I'll see you at four thirty. Yep, and then just kind of walks away. Or my favorite scene was the one where they're in the woods, and it's like he's Hurley's teaching him, like, "Okay, this is how you you hit a guy right here. You think you kill him? No, you hit him. It's like any points, like right here, right." He at actually, like, push it, puts the yeah. knife right against there, and he's like, "Just bam," and he's done. He'll yeah. bleed out. And then he like gives the knife to the guy and he goes, "Okay, Mitch, you're up." No, that's when that's when it happened after that because Mitch he's like he hands the knife yeah, to well, Mitch he, and he goes, "No, he no, had, that, he, he had the knife at Mitch's throat because Mitch had to take the knife away or come at me." Mitch had to come at him with the knife, and then after he had had the knife at Mitch's throat, yeah, then he threw it to another guy and he goes, "Okay, Mitch, now you defend." And the whole thing I liked about that yeah. scene is. Not like it was like, okay, I've got the upper hand. He kicks his leg, just like kicks the leg, gives the other guy the advantage. advantage. Or like they're wrestling, he just takes the gun, bam, bam, right above their head, right like next to their ears. And he, the big thing, like Hurley, you hesitate, you die. Yep. And I was like, oh man, like that scene, what a way to kind of, if you're teaching people for that combat a- aspect, that's how you do it. You don't know, like he even said, expect the unexpected. Exactly. To where, like, when he kicked the leg, you don't know if someone's there. Boom, boom, those gunshots. You don't know if people are going to be shooting all around. And if you lose your focus for a second, yep. you're done. You're like, one second of hesitation, you're dead. Exactly. No, it was great, too. But the other thing, side to that was um, how Mitch, yeah, he did get distracted by the gunshot thing. Mm-hmm. But, like, how he dealt with fighting the other guy with all these other things happening, <laughs> like my my favorite little part from that was, who the fuck grabs a blade? Yeah, like, dude, Mitch grabs the blade and like I don't give a fuck kind of a thing. Yeah, no, Mitch didn't give a shit. Uh huh. He actually grabbed. Yeah, he grabbed low on the like right against the handle, the pommel of it. But he still grabbed. He grabbed the blade, the blade and pulled it like knocked it like pulled it out of the guy's hand. Mm-hmm. So he couldn't get him with the blade. That that was funny. Who the fuck grabs a blade? Yeah, as, as, as he's got all pissed because he lost. Yeah, but it's like n- you don't expect someone to actually grab to a grab blade. the blade, or no. like the scene where you could tell Mitch got angry at this, where it's like they're all sleeping, and then it's like kick, kick. Oh, you're dead! You're dead! You're dead! Why wasn't no one on watch? And you could tell like Mitch was just pissed off. Yeah, because it's like. They kind of have that, like they're beating it into them that you gotta be, you gotta have someone on watch at all times because someone can come and kill you. Even, and the thing that I loved with Hurley is like the scene where he has Mitch come in. Yeah. And he's like, he's got the laptop and he goes, sit down, Mitch. Want to watch a movie? And he turns it around and it's the video that he was making on his phone yeah. of his fiance. I loved how Hurley. Didn't just say, hey, don't keep it personal and was like a lecture. No, he was like, I'm going to get you riled up. I'm going to fuck with your emotions. Oh, yeah. And then tell you to not keep it personal. Like, I am going to poke and prod you 
and be that re- guy till until you're like a robot, basically. Yeah, until you realize, no, you can't let it, let emotions mm-hmm. get it part of it, which is great because he goes he goes at Hurley. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, he goes to he unplug jumps it. over the table. He jumps over the table to like he jumps to unplug it. Hurley pulls the computer back. Mm-hmm. He goes for Hurley. He just wraps the cord around his neck yeah. and says, "Are you done? Basically, just, are you done yet? Are you done yet?" Dude, he was strangling him. I was yeah. like, "You can't kill him. He's the main character." Oh no, he's not gonna kill him, but he's gonna make sure he he learned a lesson. But I mean, like, even the electrotherapy scene oh. was insane. Like, he was it wasn't even, even fucking, electrotherapy. Well, he it was, was just fucking a... with Mitch then too. He was because the scene was like they had like the virtual reality. He didn't like Mitch. On. And, well, he didn't want Mitch there. No, he didn't. He thought Mitch was a loose cannon. And also earlier, like in the film, after you piece everything together, you could see a little bit the, the teammate that went rogue. Well, went rogue. They, he was left behind, basically. Yeah, you could see some, some is, of it, him and Mitch. He just reminded Hurley too much. And Hurley's like, I don't want to deal with that again. Yeah, exactly. But he like, doesn't want even, another one of those. Even that scene. Was amazing because like they've got the electro um, yeah it's supposed to be the shockers ele- on and like he's like okay if you shoot the wrong person you get a little bit of a shock you shoot this person you get a bigger shock kind of a thing so basically the here are the threats they sh- um if they shoot you you it's gonna be a lot worse that's it that's yeah it. it's like if you shoot the shoot these are your targets um if you shoot. If you shoot a civilian, you get a shock. Knock. But if, if they, they shoot, shoot you, you, it's a bigger shock. Exactly. It's, but yeah. the thing I like, though, is how he was fucking with Mitch, where he's like, I'm just going to put and change like a civilian to a into that terrorist. Into that terrorist. Oh, the yeah, one that is, Mitch uh, wants to kill. Yeah. And like even at the end of the scene, everyone else is like, what the f-? And they like rip it They're off. They're tearing off. Mitch is on the ground like, doof, 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 getting shocked, but he's still shooting at that terrorist that Hurley yeah which was pretty pretty intense because like you could see like the drool coming out of his mouth from being shocked Mm -hmm. so much like the amount of sweat on him just trying to deal with it that also was like man like with the testing through the roof that they kept mentioning yeah that was a firsthand experience of how much pain Mitch can take how much he's willing to go through to get to his objective Mm -hmm. how much he's willing just and that was another part where you could see Hurley Obviously, playing with the emotions, but also the okay, he's taking it personal, yeah, and don't take it personal because it's doof, doof, he just keeps shooting and shooting. Or the one where they're in like the IKEA situation, yeah, and I like that scene also. This whole thing together, like this whole group of the movie, I really liked where the one guy finds the target and he's going to it, but then there's that lady behind him, and even like Hurley. He what with like the um, shocker gun just keeps sh- pop 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 pop. She's like stop it. Oh, you mean um <laughs> no, it was rap because you had rap and I think the other guy was Victor because they were like the two yeah, final contenders. Mitch it, went up to that guy and he was like, oh, okay, and the lady's like, oh, can I help you? Oh no, I'm good. And then he looked and he saw the lady following um, the guy who had saw the threat. Yeah, and then what happened is uh. It was weird because he had a knife. He was gonna, uh-huh. and it was like a simulation yeah. scenario. You find out. Um, he comes up and he's like, he starts pulling the knife out, but the lady's co- coming up behind him with a gun. Uh huh. And then you got a rap that just comes out of the corner, pops the target, then like beh- like from around the guy, pops the lady, and he keeps firing. Yeah, at her. and she's like, stop. Like it's just a simulation. Yeah, exactly. But it's like, oh man, this guy is. A loose cannon. However, yeah. it does help them in the field because when they go into their first mission, yeah, it's like the um, the one of his allies gets killed, but then he chases down the terrorist exactly and kills, kills the him. terrorist basically. Well, even before that, um, they would need intel and stuff, and they didn't get enough. He, um, the assistant, he walks mm-hmm. by, bumps into him, but steals his phone. Yeah, and um. She, the girl that was the CIA agent yeah. that was with him, says no. I mean, I he's think it not, was the Turkish the, CIA, the Turkish agent. CIA yeah. agent. And he goes, she goes, no. I mean, the guys, the assistant's he's not going to tell his shit. boss. He's, yeah, he's a little scared of him, shit. exactly. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah. I mean, Mitch figured out what he was doing. It's mm-hmm. like I could steal this phone from him. And it's not going to get back to the boss because. Dude, what about the dog scene too? That was interesting. Where he gets tra- like, what kind of? I I get it's a movie, and like yeah. in real life, it would be a little bit different. But the way he was able to trick the dogs to get in and get out, 
where the only damage he had was he the hand, arm that he wrapped, the dog just chomping down. Yeah, and then the other two follow arm, in. Which in real life, like I've never done it myself and put on one of those big suits. No, but I like either, but. the one channel that I watch in Brave Wilderness, he did that. And when he had the thing on, he's like, oh, am I going to feel it? Or when he had the sleeve on, he's like, am I going to feel it? And the guy goes, well, it's not going to be like really bad, but you'll feel it. You'll feel that pressure. Like it's not going to pierce your skin, Yeah, but you'll feel it. So even taking that into consideration here, I know it's not the same thing. He just wrapped cloth about it. Even having a dog chop on that arm, the tenacity to not go, oh, 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 that really hurts. Yeah. And pull the dog into the car so that you can get out and trap them in there. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, the whole thing, let's let's move forward into the rogue agent. Yes. Let's just move forward because the big, or actually. Ghost. I'm trying to think. Before we get to ghost, I want to mention one last thing. Okay. The twist with the Turkish CIA agent. Yes. Because I thought, like. Well, maybe when, we should mention ghost first, yeah? You think? Yeah. Wh- which way do you want to go? Ghost and then Turkish agent. The way they went with Ghost yeah. is the thing that I liked is not only does he remind Hurley or remind Hurley of Mitch, but it was like Hurley's Hurley handpicked him. Yeah. He was Hurley's like project, like Hurley's child. Yeah. It's like that one where it's like, he's the one I picked, he's the golden child, he's the one and even Hurley when it like he says it in the movie, he's like I should have left him in the Navy. Yeah. I should have left him on that boat. I should have never picked him up. Yeah, no, it was great. And I mean, um, Ghost, Taylor Kish, if I'm mm-hmm. saying it right, um, played that part really well, too. Like, the guy that, you left me. You left me behind. Like, mm-hmm. the guy going through a PTSD and a revenge yeah. story himself of, you guys left me behind. You treated me like I was your son. So, like, I... <laughs> Like he's like in a sense like he is revenge, but he just kind of lost it. He's just he's well, out for and that goes di- back to complete the, destruction. The whole like training montage yeah. that they put together, like Hurley said, you get locked somewhere, click, and I was like, oh, did he know that was empty? Right? Did he know that was empty, or did he just? I kinda, think he had to have. Known. Or did he just Russian roulette it on himself? <laughs> where you can't Russian roulette with that kind of gun, he was Ricky. Just ba- like he was just basically just like. Yeah, and if you're and if you're caught somewhere, just and like pistol in the back of the throat and just hit and it went click. Yeah. That's something that Ghost didn't do though. No. Ghost was all like, you know, you left me behind, you should have came back. And even Hurley was like, if we would have came back, ten men would have died to try to save one. Exactly. And uh that's just like the mentality of, uh, I guess, a PTSD of getting lost behind mm-hmm. or left behind, I should Especially say. Especially when you see, like, he saw Hurley as a father figure. Exactly. Hurley saw him as, like, the son he never had kind of a thing. Yeah. And the torture scene between Ghost and Hurley. Oh, man. What the fuck, You couldn't man? even watch some of it. I couldn't. Like, he, as soon as he put the screwdriver at the base of the nail underneath, I was like, nope, now watch. Actually, no. thinking back, I think those were Neil Nose pliers. Because I was like, I can't, I can't. I'll, I'll say for them, but I know I it's going to make you he cringe. Just, he just fucking ripped the, yeah, ripped he just the nails yanked off. it right off. I can talk about it. Yeah. I just can't see it. No. Oh, as, soon was, as, he, as soon as he put it right under the nail, I went, nope, nope, Yeah, nope, no, that was, nope, I'll say because he it. didn't see it. That was gruesome. I've actually had my nail flip open. I saw, and I saw I'm like, part, oh my God, it just cr- reminded me of I that. I saw part of the second one because I didn't expect them to do it twice. Yeah. So I saw like a little <laughs> bit of that second one, but I was like, oh no. No, no, don't do like don't do that to me. No, but, you were like, everything that he had. One of his arms in, in a clamp. Uh, vice clamp, yeah, vice. There vice you go. No, you're right. It was a, he's it was got vice. one arm chained up here. He's got his feet in water that he basically threw a jumper cable in. Yeah, to shock just him. electrocute him. He oh, picked off two of his nails, stabbed him, and then cauterized the wound with, with a blowtorch. Blow oh, that yeah, no. Uh. Mm. Oh, I, I couldn't imagine any of that, near any of that. And the twist at the end with Ghost, where it's like, you think that he's a third-party guy trying to build this bomb for... Someone else. The like, terrorists for the other, um, I can't remember what country it was. And then even at the I end... I think it was like, Iran. And then Hurley was just like, at the very end, he's just like, you idiots. 
the bomb was for him, and then pop, 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 pop. Yeah, he just and they're all dead. Pops them all off. He's like, no, dead. that's yeah, because he um, and go he's gonna he's using the nuke on uh an American revenge story because mm-hmm. like America, like you and America left me behind. So yeah, and like Hurley said, he always wanted to die at sea. Yep. And here's here's my dumb moment of the movie. Yes. The Turkish agent. Yeah. When she saw the guy who was responsible for killing her uncle, and she shoots him. Did you expect it not to make noise? Yeah, right. Did you expect it not to make noise? Just strangle them. Strangle them, and then they don't know you're there, because you died then, because the ghosts knew where you were. Exactly. You. They know it's where like, you're at. It's like, what the like, what the hell? Like, I know you're covered with emotion. Strangle them. Just get a good strangle out. You don't need to shoot the gun. No. And let them know where you are. That was my dumb moment of the movie. That was the dumb was moment like, of the wow. movie. But you, you wanted dumb. to talk about her as well. I did. And the thing I wanted to mention with her is when her and Mitch are in the, are room. In the room watching the physicist, the thing I was worried about at first when she's like, oh, you know, it's okay. I know what it means to lose someone and I'm in the same situation. I'm just sitting there going, don't do it. Don't do it. Basically like a Daenerys Jon Snow thing. Yeah. Eh, don't make him fall in love. Or like I'm like, yeah. They're going to fall in love. Oh, how Ricky like, felt about it. I'm like, there. I had a feeling where I'm like, oh, I don't know how I feel, but yeah. They're going to make him fall in love. And then the twist of like, she says, we're going to get ghost. And he goes, I, I never said fucking that. told you about that. And the whole scene of like, tell me who, <laughs> Batman, who do you work for? <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> and then like strangle it. Where are the terrorists going? So this is going to be a very bad joke. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to make it. Fuck it. I'm not going to make the joke. It's a, it's a bad joke. I'm sorry I even brought it up. I was thinking of something that I thought about when he was strangling her yeah. in the tub. Fuck it. I'm going to say it. You know what came to my mind huh. when he was strangling her in the bath water? Yeah. Waterboarding. Oh. That's the thing. I'm like, I'm sitting there going, oh, I guess waterboarding does still work. <laughs> but I was like, oh my God, that is a terrible joke. It is a terrible joke. Because he's joke. basically strangling her in water. Yeah. In water before, um, he didn't kill her though. No. He, he didn't Well, kill he left her alive because he needed information. Yeah. They needed the information from her. But even at the end where it was... The kind of I like the boat scene too. Yeah, where it was they're fighting and then all of a sudden, whoosh, they hit the ceiling and they fall back down. I thought that was kind of cool. Well, because of the bouncing with the zero, like creating a little yeah. zero g, it was great. Like when it, it hit fly. when it hit the waves, yeah, they hit would, certain like, hit waves, the it, they like would fly up in the air and just go whack back yeah. down. It would change the fight. Mm-hmm. It was great because they would like sometimes it. It was just kind of like the training montage, actually. Yeah. actually. You don't know what to expect. Like, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, they go up in the air and slam back down, and they're just fighting. Yeah. And then he uses uh, what Hurley taught him. Yes, he does. And yep. he just, bam, right in the right in the throat, yep. lets him bleed out. And then it's a big thing of, I did not know at the end if they were going to kill Mitch or let him live. Yeah. I, for a second, I thought they're going to, Hurley and Mitch are going to die together. That's what I thought, because... Hurley going to save Mitch, like, we're going to get him. And Mitch is like, I got to get the bomb out. My first thought was like, just fucking drop it in the water. Drop it in the water, let it go all the way down. I know it's still going to be a big boom, but like. As we saw. That that should, oh, dude, it created a crater. We're like, that that ship that was the little motorboat, that fucking <laughs> vaporized. Yeah. No, it vaporized pulled it apart. Vaporized from the plutonium. It pulled it apart. Anything you want to talk about about the end? Because I'm li- literally like the end was just basically I thought they were going to die and then they did. No, I thought like I didn't think Hurley and him were going to die. Mm-hmm. I thought, you thought the, one of them was thought gonna Mitch die? was going to die and okay. just like kind of hey uh, no I got to do this and get this away from everyone type thing like sacrifice himself. Bat and I thought about Batman. This. Batman the Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> Very Batman the Dark Knight Rises. I gotta ask. I gotta take the bomb out myself. I gotta take the nuke away from Gotham. <laughs> Got me, got, got me away from Gotham. That basically what I thought when he's driving away. Oh, he fixed the autopilot. Huh. <laughs> he's turning. He's no, don't shoot the boat. It's turning. The boat is turning. That was one of the things in the movie. It's still a threat it's, since it's got the bomb on it. Yeah, it's still a threat. No, don't shoot it. The boat is turning away. <laughs> Any before we get into show stealer, before we get into um, our rating. Anything in this film you think we missed? No. Anything in spoiler mode you think we didn't No, I touch? think uh, we got everything that they need to know. But Johnny, let's move into let's end the show. Yep. Let's end the show with our show stealer and our rating. And let's be honest, Johnny asked me before we recorded, well, Ricky, you're going to go first, right? 
You're going to go first, right? We all know who I'm giving it to. Yeah, like, let's do. get the obvious out of the room. Michael Keaton's Ricky Show Stealer. He, he was amazing in this one. Yet again, another A-plus performance for me from Michael Keaton. Yes. Uh, it was close for me, but I am going to give it to Michael Keaton as well. Hell yeah, you are. But Hell I mean, yeah, we had to two, Michael Keaton, Johnny. We had two of them that were close behind. Uh, Dylan O'Brien as Mitch Rapp, the main actor. I'll give you the honorable. But also um, Taylor Kish with Ghost because it was a believable role that he played. Mm -hmm. Like just his mindset and everything of like, I'm just in it to go get some revenge and I don't yeah. care if I survive it. What about the female CIA agent? Not the Turkish one. The one that went head to head with uh, Hurley. Trying to think of who you're talking about. The now. one that recruited Mitch, the one that was all like, "Dude, he's oh, testing her." her. The, ma the main CIA. Agent? Does she come even close to an honorable mention? I don't. I mean, she was this kind of like a general role to me. Johnny's like, so she met a general action movie trope character. Yeah, kind is of is what you're saying. Yeah, the, the she was actual. She was actually very hypocritical in this movie. She was because the first half of the movie, she's all about don't worry about it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. that's how Mitch is, and then at the end, she's like, do as you're told. Yeah, you should know that's not how Mitch rolls. No, exactly. You wanted him in this, and now you just want him to listen to orders because you gave the order. No, he's not going to do that. Part of was like, fuck you, man. Mitch, do whatever you want. What he did, he took the phone, let the Turkish agent out, and went and went to go save Hurley. But yeah, Michael Keaton and me is the obvious show stealer. Yeah. Great scene. Plus the cell job he did during being tortured. Yeah. Like that was great A acting yeah. from Michael Keaton, one of the great actors that, uh, like, first Spider Man Homecoming this year. Now he's got American Assassin. Great performance from Michael Keaton. I'll let you go first here, though. How many nukes you giving it? And that's what we decided on. Five nukes out of five. How much are you giving American Assassin? I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of five nukes. Okay. okay. Um, it's a great movie. I don't know if I'm going to go buy it. Mm -hmm. um, if we had time, I may go see it again, even though there are other movies I want to go see. Mm -hmm. But um, I... I I would probably rent it from Redbox if I'm in mm -hmm. the mood again, but it's not like I'd go buy it. I am right there with you. I'll give it. I'm giving it a three point five, or not a three point five, a three out of five. Okay, is what I'm giving it because the way I look at it is, am I gonna buy it? No. Am I going to be like, yeah, I really want to go see it again? No. If somebody though that I am friends with is like, hey, I want to go see America. Like if Dave was like, hey, I want to go see American Assassin. I'd be like, sure, I'll go with you. Yeah. I would go see it again, but I'm not going to actively go, go see, see it, it again. a second exactly. time. That's the same and with me. Kind of, I've given it a three because it's a good movie. It's good, not great. Yes, it's got some faults in the tropes and just, um, like, that's the main thing. It's just, it, it's it's a general action movie. It is. And it, I could see the things with the, like, oh, the Jason Bourne um, things that critics said, but it was still a good movie to me. It wasn't like a, I compared it to other action movies and was like, oh, it falls short. I was entertained for the two hours that we were in the theater. I thought it was a good movie, but it's good, not great when it comes to American Assassin. Yes. Any final thoughts you got before I close everything up? Nope, that's all I got. This is where you guys come in. Let us know if you've seen American Assassin. Let us know what you guys think down below in the comment section next week. Johnny and I, do you know what we're seeing? Do you know what we're seeing next I week? I don't remember which one. Kingsman the we Golden have a lot Circle of to go see. next week. Basically, we're doing movie reviews all the way until the week before Thor. Yeah. That's what we have. We've got Kingsman, we've got Geostorm, we've got The Foreigner, we've got American Maid. Yep. And then we have Thor, I believe. I believe I'm missing one. Maybe Blade Runner. Blade Runner. And Blade then we got Runner. a week before Thor. And then the week before Thor. And then, we all refresh ourselves for the big movie coming up. And then we go and get Thor. But make sure to check out the generic the regular rick and johnny podcast generic just sounds so bad no just it just the sounds regular. so weird the regular like the generic version. yeah you yeah, know the one we just put you out gotta there get that the jewel brand yeah the, <laughs> the mvp brand R R J podcast <laughs> but the regular version thank you johnny yeah, yeah. of <laughs> the rick and johnny podcast talking about some great topics this week some game of thrones that's why i've got this shirt on but i want to thank you guys for either watching on youtube or listening on blog talk radio and as always have a good day everybody